and got me sweating over here. My, my goodness. Uh, I didn't see everybody. We had it here. Okay. Take your eight in the house. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hey. Um. Okay, Q. It's still going. All right. Good well, morning. we. Oh, look at the little Peters. I see different people and Blake and. Hey, y'all. Oh, Morgan McGuire. We are just happy to see all of the little ones. Anticipation. <laughs> I see my grandbabies. I got excited, y'all. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> I'm just letting more and more people into the room. So that's awesome. Thank y'all for coming Ooh. out. They waving at me. Hey, Hi, Kaden. <laughs> Bishop waving. Yay. The future. Hey, Aaron. Yeah. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm pushing the button. Hey, all. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Good afternoon. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm just pushing the button. Okay. You're live. Good afternoon. I'm Kathleen McKinney Franks, chairperson target for the arts. The arts, yes, it does make life eminently worth living. The arts in all its varied forms improves the quality of life and living for all and improves it in excellence. All right. <laughs> Omicron Lambda Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is implementing international program target for the arts. We're implementing it with enthusiasm while exemplifying excellence through sustainable service. We are so happy that you have joined us for the Arts on a Sunday Afternoon Black History Edition. Our young listeners are in for a very special little Ivy story time. Today we will feature a special book, The Five O'Clock Band, by New Orleans jazz musician Trombone Shorty Andrews. We will begin this afternoon with a welcome by Karen Dillon Francis, Omicron Lambda Omega Chapter President. Then Linda Savalier, OLQ Target for the Arts member, will introduce our special celebrity guest reader for this afternoon. Malik Mingo will share the award-winning colorful tale, The Five O'Clock Band. Following the virtual story time reading, Marjorie Parker, OLQ Chapter Vice President and Programs Chair, will bring closing remarks. Sit back. Enjoy the evening and where you're at, where you're at. Mm -hmm. So, ours and everyone who has joined us this afternoon, thank you so much for coming on to join us for our special arts on a Sunday afternoon. What a great day! And so we first want to say special thanks to our celebrity reader, Malik Mingo, who is the host of Great Day Louisiana on WWL. What a great, great thing to have him to, to take the time to read this great book to all of our little Ivies who have joined us this afternoon. So you all, let's sit back, like Kathleen just said, and enjoy. Good evening. I'll be introducing our guest reader, Malik Mingo. He is the host of Great Day Louisiana, an entertainment lifestyle show on CBS affiliate in New Orleans, Louisiana. Malik is a New Orleans native. He was born here, but moved to Texas in 2005 after Hurricane Katrina. Malik lived in San Antonio, Texas before attending Texas State University in San Marcos. 
He graduated magnum cum laude in 2017 with a bachelor's degree in electronic media and mass communication. Malik's first job brought him to San Angelo where he was a producer, reporter, fill-in anchor, and weatherman. Malik covered everything from breaking news to local events. Malik is so excited to rediscover his hometown, New Orleans. When Malik is not at work, you can catch him enjoying everything New Orleans has to offer. He loves to try new restaurants, attractions, and festivals. Malik is always looking for the next story idea. We are so excited to have him as our guest reader this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, introducing our storyteller, Malik Mingo. Woo! Thank you, Linda, and thank you everyone so much. I am so excited to be doing this. I wanna shout out the whole Omicron Lambda Omega chapter for inviting me, and I cannot wait to read this story. Quick story, I actually interviewed Trombone Shorty a couple of months ago, and he is so awesome, everyone. And this book, it is a great book. So like everyone's been saying, grab yourself a beverage, maybe a snack if you're hungry, and let's listen and, of course, read this beautiful book. So let's get started. Thanks so much for having me. And hello to all the little ones. I see you all. You all are the future. You all are the future for sure. Love that. All right, my friends. So again, the name of the book is called The Five O'Clock Band, right? By Trombone Shorty, illustrated by Carol Cott Honor winner, Brian Collier. Shout out to him as well. Let's do it, everyone. All right, here we go. Everyone's hometown is special. It's the place that helps you grow into the person you'll become for one little boy called Shorty, his hometown roots were very important. He was from New Orleans, Louisiana. And in this city, there are sounds and tastes that are unlike any other place in the world. Many even call it magical. The city showed Shorty how to see the world and its people helped him become the person he was destined to be. I hear that for sure. Shorty liked to play music. In fact, he was in a band. They called themselves the Five O'Clock Band because there was the time, that rather was the time, they started playing every afternoon after school in and after school and homework were finished. Very important. The band lived in a lively neighborhood called Treme. Have you been there? The Five, the five O'Clock Band there we go. The five o'clock band would parade through the streets of Treme down to Jackson Square in the center of town and back around, just like all the older musicians did. They played for the people for rounds of applause, and sometimes they even got tips, eh? But one day, Shorty was practicing his trombone and got so lost in his own music that he forgot to meet the five o'clock band at their regular time. Uh-oh. Shorty ran to Jackson Square, trombone in hand, but his bandmates had already left. What is he supposed to do? He had missed their performance and parade, and he knew he had let them down. One day I want to be the band leader, but how can that happen if I can't even get to the show on time? Shorty thought. Shorty walked through the neighborhood around the large square in the French Quarter where musicians gathered. He smelled delicious gumbo and jambalaya in the air and heard the sounds of other musicians echoing through the street. But Shorty kept his head down. Not even the sounds of the brass instruments could cheer him up until suddenly he heard a booming voice cry out, Shorty, where you at? Shorty looked up to see Tuba Treme. He was a giant of a man, but he was as sweet as pecan pie, and the sounds that floated out from his horn were even tastier. Tuba and his band had been playing in the quarter for a long time, as Shorty could remember, and they played songs that were over 100 years old. We at, Tuba? Shorty called back, feeling down. 
Looks like you've got the blues, little man. Tuba Treme had noticed Shorty's sad face. I missed the five o'clock band, and I don't know where they're go- where they've gone. I'm afraid I won't have what it takes to be a real band leader if I can't even show up on time. Tuba Treme placed his giant horn to his lips. The first notes of When the Saints Go Marching In tickled Shorty's ears. Like so many other New Orleans musicians, Shorty had learned how to play his horn with this tune. Pride swelled in Shorty's chest as he and Tuba played the same notes together that Louis Armstrong had played many years before them in the same city streets. Tradition, Tuba Treme said, every band leader needs to know where music came from in order to move it forward. If you understand tradition and you keep it alive, you will be a great band leader. Thanks, Tuba, Shorty said as he waved goodbye. He hoped to be able to play just like Tuba Treme one day. Shorty continued walking through the quarter along the banks of the Mississippi River. Doesn't it look beautiful? A steam pump bloated alongside him and the steam whistle sounded. He thought about how many musicians had played on that river. Even Louis Armstrong, Shorty blew his own horn back to the steamboat and smiled. His growling stomach led back him, led him back towards home, but the scent of red beans and rice made him stop in his tracks as it would for me as well. Way at Shorty, Queen Lola called out the window of her restaurant. Shorty was still feeling defeated, but no one could refuse a meal from Lola, the Creole queen, one of the best chefs in New Orleans, if not the world. Way at Queen Lola, Shorty answered as he opened the door. Queen Lola served him a heaping plate of red beans and rice along with andouille sausage, collard greens, and okra with tomatoes, where's my plate? She had been making this dish for over 50 years, treating everyone who came through the door like family, even Martin Luther King Jr. As Shorty dug in, he asked Queen Lola the question that was weighing on his heart. I let my band down today, but I want to be a great band leader and make amazing music, just like you make amazing meals in your kitchen every day. How do you do it? Queen Lola smiled wide. Love, she said, that's, there's love in my food because I love every dish I make. It's, a, it's my special sauce. As long as you love what you do, you will always be a success. Let me read that again. As long as you love what you do, you will always be a success. I don't love anything more than playing music, but this meal sure is close. Thank you, Queen Lola, Shorty said. Come by anytime, Shorty, she said. Why don't you head back out and see if you can find your band? Shorty felt a little better now that his belly was full, but he knew he still had more to learn. As he walked toward Treme looking for his band, he heard the rumbling of drums in the distance. What is that? It sounded like glorious thunder. As he turned the corner, he stood face to face with the most majestic person he'd ever seen. We are Indians, a chant pierced through the warm, swampy air. It was the chief of the neighborhood Mardi Gras Indian tribe. Big Chief and his drummers chanted as they pounded a rhythm. We are Indians, Indians, Indians of the nation, the whole, whole wild creation. Shorty knew this song was a prayer that the Mardi Gras Indians sang before they marched down the streets. They believed the song would protect them on their journey as they went through the city looking for other tribes. Mardi Gras Indians only exist in New Orleans. They are a special group sacred to the city as they are. Where you at Shorty? Big Chief asked as his group slowed their drumming. Where you at Big Chief? Shorty hollered back. You and the tribe sound amazing. I'm actually looking for my group, the five o'clock band, but I need to know, what does it take to be the big chief? Big chief picked up his tambourine and shook it proudly as he looked up to the sky. 
dedication, he said. Each year, all the Indians make new suits, hand sewn from scratch. It takes a lot of time and patience, but when we hit the streets, it's worth it. We are the soul of Mardi Gras. Shorty noticed how Big Chief's suit glimmered in the light. He thought about how important it was for him to practice his craft every day in order to carry the honor of being a band leader. Suddenly, Shorty heard a familiar medley, a medley of a brass band in the distance and ran toward it. He knew those sounds could only come from the five o'clock band. And there were his friends parading down the avenue towards him. Where you at, the five o'clock band sang? Where you at, Shorty answered. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you guys today. I promise I'll never let you down again, Shorty said. But I learned that we all have the ingredients we need for success. We have dedication, we honor tradition, and most of all, we play with love. Now, I know what it takes to lead. Why don't you start us off and take the lead right now, Shorty, one of the boys said. Shorty raised his horn to his lips, stepped out in front of the band, and played the opening notes of When the Saints Go Marching In. Look at him jamming right there. As the five o'clock band paraded home to Treme, they waved at the friends and neighbors who clapped their hands and danced in step behind him. And take a look at this picture right here, everyone. This is the real five o'clock band. Troy Andrews is on the far right. What to the... And as we finish this wonderful book, again, thank you all so much for having me. I want to sing this song. Sing along with me. Oh, when the saints go marching in, sing it. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, yes, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Woo! And that, my friends, is a reading of Five o'clock band by Trombone Choice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can you all please give Malik another round of applause for the awesome reading? Yes, another round of applause. Thank you so much, Malik. Does any of our little Ivies have any questions for Malik about the book or about the story? Any of our little Ivies? I know he did a fantastic job, but we just want to give you a little opportunity to talk to our celebrity guest reader. All right, all right. Well, I just want to say thank you on behalf of the Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated. My name is Marjorie Parker, and I'm your program chair for our chapter. And we just want to say thank you so much, Malik. I've been on Malik I was a little toddler before Katrina and <laughs> running around with his twin Marcus and his older brother, Torian. And so we really appreciate you coming and giving us a little bit of your time, Malik. So we thank you again, another round of applause for you. And thank you so much to our chapter members for coming out. Thank you so much to the public for coming out to uh, enjoy our little Ivy story time. And of course, our course on a Sunday afternoon. You have if a question. Don't... I think we have oh, we have a question, I'm so talk. sorry. Cause I can go now, let me see. I didn't hear the question. Can y'all give us a question? Oh, hey. it's Chloe. Oh, it's Chloe. That's my guy, baby. Hello. What's hey, your hello, question, Chloe, Chloe and little Eric? Hey, y'all. What's your question? My question is, is that story real? Mr. Malik, is that story real? It's as real as you want it to be. Beautiful people, it lives in our hearts. Trombone Shorty, you know, he really is a trombone player. Wait, I need to say something. What? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> What do you want to say? I know how to play the trombone. Uh -oh. You do? Ooh, I want to learn how to play. Can you teach me how to play? <laughs> Thea, we will have to set that up. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Does any of any other our little Ivies have any comments or questions? Anyone else want to show Mr. Malik how to play that trombone tonight? As we know, he is very talented and uh, very dynamic. All right, so if it is, let me make sure I'm gonna take with my, check with my tech people and my, of course, my general. Do we have any other questions? Kathleen and Kia? 
I, I will see. say what I what I loved about this story, and I hope the little ones, as well as us as adults, take away. You know, we all have the ingredients for success, right? Honoring tradition, loving what you do. So, all of the little ones out there, find what you love to do, whether it's playing the trombone, becoming a doctor, or becoming a talk show host. Go out there and succeed because you have wonderful people around you, and if you ask them questions and they give you those great answers, you will make it. You got it, little ones. You got it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Malik, your energy is infectious, man. Thank you so much. It's so contagious. All right, uh, Miss Kathleen, do you have anything else for us to say? No, I just thank Malik so much for coming out. I thank all of our little Ivies for participating and listening intently. And I was wondering if anybody realized where where you at? Where was the story? Anybody, any of our little listeners realize where that story took place? There's New Orleans. A That's right, New Orleans. And anybody else knows what part of New Orleans? What part of New Orleans was he in? Where did he walk around and meet everybody who hollered? Where you at? Where you at? Trombone shorty. What part of our city that's so famous? Wait, Shannon's trying to figure it out. Starts with a tree. Indians? Where do the Indians? They have Indians walking around. That is true. The Indians parade mm -hmm. around there at carnival time. That's true. And he lived in a Great special boy. part. And, and it starts with a T, the special part of the city where he lived. And it's right next door to the part of the city that everybody knows about New Orleans. It's called the French something. Yeah. Well, I think. This French Quarter. Yes, right. So right next to the French Quarter. So that's where he was at. Where you at? Where you at? He was in the quarter in Tremé. So we thank you all. And please remember that you can do anything. We all have those ingredients within us. And I just thank you, Malik, again for your, your spirit, your enthusiasm, and of course, your offer to come back anytime we need you again. <laughs> I'm here, baby. Virtual, in person, I'm here. I'll bring the five o'clock band with me. Yes, thank you oh, so my. much. Thank you again. And so um, if there isn't anything else, until next time, remember the arts on a Sunday afternoon and carve out a little piece of space for us. All right. Hey. Thank, you. thank you all so thank much. Thank you, everyone. Shout out to the AKAs. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.